I'm Bob Mitteke with BizTalk Texas. I'm talking to Kelvin Sieber. Uh, you build custom cars, and uh, maybe you could tell me something, a little bit about it. I started uh, around 18 years old, working in a body shop as a prep sand kid, you know, just learning how to do the, the work before it got painted. Right. And uh, in a very short time, they had me painting cars, and uh, I really liked that kind of work. And I uh, stuck with it uh, for well, it's been over 30 years now. Wow! And I've always, uh, always really enjoyed it. I never really lost interest in it. And uh, I always, uh, you know, take a challenge on, like a a challenge kind of drives me, you know. So then, uh, sooner or later, I just ended up. I started working on hot rods and restoration type work, and that's been my love. That's what I've done for since the early 90s. I've been Pretty much doing that type of work right yeah. was there any project that you've done that you know might have a story about and how you know how good it how easy it was or how hard uh, it was usually it's all the secrets when you start digging into it that you find out the problems like a lot of times people are pretty good at other shops you know about making something look fairly decent but then it's hard to tell when you start on a project what's underneath it you know and that's the that's the difficult part typically you have to strip it down completely to bare metal and there's uh, usually most commonly rust issues that have been hidden and uh, problems that need resolved. We're working on a 40 Chevrolet truck right now that we're doing for a customer and I wasn't really contracted to do mechanical work on it but just today we're reassembling it and found out that the steering box somebody beforehand had uh, welded the rag joint in there it's a joint that uh, gives a little bit of leeway for this between the steering column and the steering box right and uh, uh, they welded it in and they they used the wrong size uh, collar on it and and so now when you go to turn the wheel it it tries to rock against the the uh, frame basically it puts pressure in there so now I have to address that problem even though it wasn't originally my my problem but I want to make sure that any customer I do work for that the work I've always felt this way that I want it to be enjoyable to drive and not any problems to worry about once they pick it up it's trouble free you know right. for uh, 15 years or better you know I mean as far as the paint and body go the fitment and everything but uh, and the quality of the paint and all that stuff but uh as far as uh, usually it's been a lot of horror stories, you know, I get in the middle <laughs> of a lot of times, uh, unfortunately, uh, people have really tried hard to get a good job done and they've been at least to one or two or three different shops trying to get their problem resolved and then I end up with it and uh, we end up fixing the problems, you know, and it's, right. just, uh, it's not always, it's not always easy to address, but you just have to forge through, you know, and, and uh, resolve whatever you come across, you know. Well, I'm sure budget budget has a lot to do with what you can and can't do on a car. Yeah, and that's the tough part. Uh, you know, everybody wants a price, you know. Uh, it's not quite the same as going to McDonald's and getting a hamburger. Right. There's so many hidden things. It's like restoration of an old building. You start out looking at it and thinking well it doesn't look too bad you know and pretty soon you get in behind the walls and it's rotted out and somebody has been there before you that did in proper plumbing and wiring and pretty soon you're starting all over again and it's a big job and it, you know so it's it's uh, as far as budget it's really difficult uh, to budget a job like that unless you unless it's a similar car you've worked on several times like muscle cars are a little easier to address say than Cars that are pre-war that have four-piece hoods, uh, they're always challenging. They've had a lot of hands on them. They're very old. They've been they've been uh, driven down rough roads, and uh, you know the original cars they designed in the 20s to go 30 miles an hour. You know, I mean, right. so and everybody today wants air conditioning, electric windows, uh, you know, cruise control, a big V8 engine, and lots of power, and you try to fit all that in a little tiny package that originally came with a four cylinder and uh, sometimes not even windows you know on the sides you know so 
Well, we're currently working on a, a 1962 S3 Bentley, and it's not a restoration, it's a repaint. Uh, there's some differences there. Uh, so in a repaint situation, I just address what I find that's really in poor shape. And uh, unfortunately, uh, all four wheel wells had to be uh, cut open, welded, uh, again, the car came in, it was shiny and painted, but this wasn't, the customer wasn't happy with the quality and neither was I, you know, it was the condition whoever had worked on it last, you know, it came from Florida and we're out here in Texas, you know, and so uh, who knows who worked on it, but uh, unfortunately every time I dig a little farther, a little deeper, uh, find more problems and uh, four months into it now, which I feel is a, is a short amount of time for the work we've done on it. Um, it's ready for uh, primer just before paint right now. We've got all the issues repaired as far as rust repair and uh, it's moving ahead real smooth and uh, now and uh, you know it, it's always a, it's again it's a, when you start on a project it's the mystery you, you don't know uh, where it's going to lead you and, and until you uh, until you're in the middle of it. Right. You know, right. like people refer to it as a can of worms. You know, we just open up a can of worms. You know, well, somebody's got to fix it. You know, and a lot of people draw short. They don't try. And uh, again, my concern is, you know, in the end, is it's a beautiful, I would say, like a piece of artwork. You know, it should win awards when it goes out to a show if a car's done right. Uh, it's a vintage like that. And uh, someone brings me something to work on. You know, it, when it leaves, it should be at least the high, the highest value it could be worth. You know, or, or I feel like someone would be spinning their wheels. You know, spending money in the wrong place. Like I said, a, a lot of times, uh, unfortunately, uh, in this business, uh, people will bring me something that uh, someone else has worked on. And same with this Bentley. Uh, you know, here we are. Like I said, it, it's it's going smooth now, uh, but there's been some hiccups and bumps. Uh, some rust issues in unusual places, and uh, I honestly haven't worked on a lot of uh, uh, handmade cars. They're pretty rare. You yeah. know? That Bentley is one of 1,290 something cars ever built with that model, so wow. it's a fairly rare car, you know. And uh, usually a production on an American car, if it's a low production, it'd be eight or 10,000 cars built. So when you think over the course of three or four years, the car was manufactured by hand in, in uh, the Rolls Royce factory, you know, in London. Uh, you know, they made they made just under thirteen hundred of them. Wow. So you know, it's a lot different, you know, working on a car like that. Now, is this a left-hand drive or right-hand drive? It's right-hand drive. Yep. So just one yep. came out of England. Yep, and it has a, a lot of woodwork in it, and uh, all the interior is getting redone in leather and uh, by a local. Uh, upholstery shop they do very nice work and uh, they also did the work on the 40 Chevrolet truck that we're doing right now and beautiful job on uh, leather and uh, yeah real happy with how things are going so you're getting ready to you're putting this new shop in I know you're you know I'm excited about that yeah yeah you have a time frame estimation or it, I'm building out of pocket I chose uh, to do it that way I'm I'm going to try to avoid borrowing money if I can help it to build it. So uh, uh, in the last, uh, I'd say about three months, I've managed to clear the property. It's bare land and uh, uh, ran, I went out on the weekends and uh, with one of my workers and we ran 600 feet of water line and put all the spigots in, the hose bibs for all the water supply everywhere. Um, and uh, it's going to, it's uh, got the septic in now, and it's just got that put in, so I feel good. I feel like we're moving ahead real real quickly, and uh, uh, fortunately, I'm, I feel very blessed that uh, people are recognizing that that we do good work here, and uh, we've got more customers waiting in line right now. They're eagerly waiting as soon as the current projects are done, so. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm very thankful. I guess the easiest way to say it is, is that, you know, through the years, I've always been driven to always do a better job to challenge myself and 
and that's put me where I am today as far as is doing the restoration and show quality work. Pretty much uh, everything I do, I would say at least 95% is, is strictly a car that someone can drive, but also they can take to a car show and right. hopefully win awards. Uh, again, I've really tried hard to always have a, a high quality finished product when I'm done and uh, any way possible to to make sure that it lasts for a long time as well. It's really important to me. Yeah. I want to feel good about what I've done in the end. I want the customer happy. I want anyone that sees that vehicle to you know say, hey, where'd you get that done? You know, and that's uh, important to me. I also want to have a good relationship with anybody in my life. I you know trying to uh, that's really important to me. Well, I know you have more work to do. And uh, I thought I didn't want to take too much of your time. I really appreciate the conversation. I hope to do it again. And uh, yeah, when too. you get your new shop, maybe we can get out there and show some video and stuff like that. I'm going to take some pictures of your cars out of here while yeah, we're here. Yeah, that'd be great. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you, right. Kelton. Mm -hmm. Thank you.